revealing the true nature of the Legion of Christ, Regnum Christi, and Regnum Christi Federation, a Catholic religious order and movement. This is Paul Lennon, um, reading and commenting on my autobiography called a Naive and Sentimental Dubliner in the Legion of Christ. And uh, chapter 16 here, part F of these recordings, recording number 65 in the English language. Coming to the end of this, we're on page 401 of the latest edition of my autobiography. And uh, we've just been spending time uh, talking about Father Peter Cronin and his, his effort to uh, unite, uh, to communicate uh, between the, the exiting legionaries uh, around the 1990s. Uh, and um, and now we're at the next part of this uh, chapter, we're calling it Regains Genesis. Regain and Regain Network, which is a blog page, excuse me, a web page called regainnetwork.org, org, excuse me, and uh, two ends in the middle, Regain Network, uh, is a, a, a page that exists to this day. And we'll go do a little bit of talking about how this how this uh, page and how this movement and how this little association uh, began. And this is the work of your humble servant and other humble servants who may or may not wish, wish to be mentioned here. Uh, the, the idea, you'll, you'll see what happens here with Regain. I'm Irish born, I'm English speaking, I'm bilingual Spanish, hopefully with a pretty good grasp of the, the culture. Um, and so my efforts will be to continue with Peter's work in bridging the gap between the English speakers and the Spanish speakers. And uh, hopefully maybe even bridging the gap between different generations of legionaries. So this would be uh, my, what is it called? My uh, call to fame or whatever that is called. Um, in, in, uh, in common parlance. Number one, in Mexico, in the 1970s, nine of Father Maciel's one-time seminarians, unbeknownst to the fragmented diaspora of other ex-legionaries, had begun individually and later together to demand accountability for the sexual abuse Maciel had perpetrated against them. Their first revelations were addressed to confessors and spiritual directors, many of whom told them to leave it all in God's hands. They insisted, approaching monsignors and bishops and finally taking their case to Rome. Receiving no response, they took their cause to the Mexican media, meeting with limited success. Their story finally got USA and worldwide attention with the Hartford Courant articles in February 1997. The book Vows of Silence by the same investigative reporters, uh, Barry and Renner, broke this conspiracy of silence and gave them a voice. Number two, network. Father Peter Cronin, XLC, had been the pioneer, he was very balanced and had a sincere interest and open-minded love for people. Now, from what I've described about Peter, Peter is a, a very balanced kind of a person, a very reasonable, a very rational uh, kind of a person, and, and that's how he he was moved to to launch his, his network. Now you're dealing with, with Paul Lennon, who is perhaps not, not as as rational as Peter, perhaps more overtly um, emotional person, um, even maybe impetuous at times, but with the same intention as Peter. Really, I, I believe I was uh, inspired by Peter, and one of my intentions was to follow in his footsteps and to continue his work. Peter launched a communication newsletter to the group 
of 20 ex-legionaries in 1992 that slowed down in 1998 as his pastoral responsibilities got heavier. Peter was made pastor of St. Michael the Archangel Parish in Silver Spring, Maryland, and only managed to send sporadic letters to his ex confreres When Peter died suddenly and prematurely at the age of 50 on September 19, 1999, Paul took up the torch. 3. Exlegionaries.com Internet Forum. Paul Lennon and others who, for a variety of reasons, wish to remain anonymous, and that is why so few names appear, continued to network as best they could, reaching out to ex-members and administering to their spiritual, emotional, and career guidance needs. Now, I mentioned here, as I say, um, an internet forum. And I think it was called Legion Awareness at the beginning. And this was very, very useful because it was a discussion group. Uh, it was it was very quite powerful actually. Number four, the Pat Kenny show in Ireland, in which Peter was prominent, broke the untouchable taboo and unmasked the Legion in Ireland, seriously damaging its future as a religious order of priests in that country. I believe Isaac Shute uh, participated in that talk show and uh, also some other former ex Legionaries. That could got good good coverage in Ireland. Five, the connection. An Irish ex legionary living in the USA contacted with me and Jose Barba after the Heart for Current articles. Later, Jose contacted me, Paul, telling him about the sexual abuse and what the Mexican and Spanish survivors had been doing. Thus, Mexico joined with the American and Irish ex-legionaries to continue to break down the legion's barrier of silence. So, uh, Regain will appear also, you know, our, our mission statement is to reveal, reveal to the public the true nature uh, of the Legion of Christ, religious order, movement, uh, whatever is cult-like organization. Six, new blood. Around the year 2000, American ex-legionaries, uh, who I won't mention at this moment, uh, began to pump new blood into the fight for truth and justice on the American front. And I was in America, so we were getting people together. The Irish were there. We're here now, right? Uh, we had the connection, we, were, we connected with Maciel's uh, original victims from the 50s and 60s. These are, these are Spanish speakers. Then we had uh, the, the first Americans who were joining and leaving the Legion and becoming uh, critical. Uh, number seven, Campaign for Truth, the Union of Mexican, Irish, American, U.S., and some Spanish ex-legionaries strengthened the group's resolve. Jose Barba, one of the victims, and his group of victims in Mexico gained greater visibility there and in the U.S., culminating with the Brian Ross's ABC 2020 expose of April 2002, where Paul joined with Mexican brothers Barba, Vaca, and Jurado, emboldened a small number of former legionaries appeared on NBC 30 in New Haven, Connecticut. Regain 8, number 8. Regain was born of the collective efforts of all members, spearheaded by a webpage guru, who finally set up the website to coordinate efforts. This would be uh, regainnetwork.com. Now, uh, we, we haven't mentioned here, and I may, be avoid, I may have omitted this, a number of the parents and lay people were joining, the, the, were, were using, were, were joining the former legionaries in the, in the uh, mission for truth, in the cause for truth. And uh, 
Again, I won't mention the, their names because they are otherwise involved now in different activities. <coughs> these uh, these women uh, were uh, are uh, staunch Catholics who were scandalized by the Legion, mostly scandalized by Father Maciel's sexual abuse of his seminarians, but also um, some had experience of mistreatment by, by the Legions. They were members of Regnum Christi lay movement, for example, of different ages. Um, uh, married women and uh, single women, mostly. <clears throat> Number nine, the Dallas Conference of 2002. As we worked on our New Haven project, the idea of a, this is a presentation, <clears throat> our, our, our New Haven presentation, the idea of a regained conference gelled with local members. That conference could not have taken place without the organizational skills of newly exited Americans. Uh, the logistical uh, generosity of Tony and the earnestness of Jose Barba and the enthusiasm of the Mexican boys and the women and men from near and afar, as well as uh, Jason Berry, the reporters who had, you know, gotten this whole movement or this whole uh, uh, awareness started in the U.S. of A. Uh, Barry and Renner. And that's enough for today. So that's uh, just keep you kind of give you an idea of how Regain started. And it's quite an extraordinary thing. Uh, it, 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 it glued people, it, it brought people together. And uh, I, I really enjoy that very much, I must say, because I bring in people from, from various parts of the world, you might say, and also from various backgrounds and from various experiences and, and trying to bring them together and, and uniting our efforts to uh, make a, a dent in, in the Legion's coat of armor. That's all for now. We're talking uh, here on the 20th of May, 2021. Uh, I personally have received my first COVID-19 shots here in Guatemala and uh, nothing the worse uh, for them. And hopefully you are taking care of yourselves and uh, moving forward, moving forward more hopefully in, in this uh, during this uh, these difficult times of pandemic. Thank you for listening and for watching.